In this video, I'd like to show you how to solve murders that appear seemingly unsolvable. Those are murders where you have no apparent connection to a workplace or acquaintance, and you have an extremely minimal amount of evidence, okay? So, first I'm going to show you how to work the CC2 camera and how to improvise if you don't get what you want. Okay, so for this murder, we have a murder in 203 Tamura called Cornet, and it happened at around 1.15 to 2.30 in the morning Sunday. And the only hint we have is that the suspicious person that was sighted has an average build. Okay, so the first thing we do is set the camera to the second floor. It's the only camera that's working on this floor. It happened on a Sunday, and the apartment where the murder happened is over there. And now we scroll back. Okay, 131, that's around the murder time. We have this person standing over here. So here's an undocumented thing. If you mouse over on the camera like this, and you press F, then you get the same information like right-clicking on a person that's standing in close proximity. Then you get the information that's visible from just looking at it. We check build large. Okay, so it's not this guy. Let's keep scrolling. It's not her either. Because I want to keep the video short, I'll just skip out a few characters. I already investigated her. Okay, oh, he probably left the apartment uh, at that time. It's really empty. Nothing over here. Now, if you don't find anything on the floor where the murder happened, you can do two things. You can switch back to Saturday. Maybe a few hours before that, you might find an interesting person. Let's look around. Not her. And the same blonde guy that wasn't it. That's about four hours before that. We switch back to Sunday. Now we have to ask. The NPC that committed the murder. Does he live in that building? Where does he live in that building if he lives here? Or does he work in this building? Or does he do both? Now, I know the Tamura building is almost exclusively an apartment block. So it has very few jobs in the building, like janitors or security guard. But there's a probability that he's not working in this place. Now, there's a probability that's good that he might work in this place. Now, the murder happened on the second floor. What's the probability of him living in one of the 15 to 20 floors above or in the floor below. So him living in this in the first floor is extremely low. So if we switch the camera to the ground floor, or the, the first floor above ground over here, the camera at the staircase, if he's spotted, if the, if the murder is spotted on this place, then he's most likely leaving the building for some reason. Or he's living in the, in the ground floor, which is very improbable. Okay, so let's take a look. Because the trick here is not to not to give up because you don't get the CCTV camera right in front of the murder. You got to expand. Okay, let's look at this guy. 008. He's in the ground floor below. Back to playing the guy out. Okay. Build average. Could be it. Okay, yeah, let's keep scrolling. So it's another thing you can do. And you click on a person, you go toggle flag on the footage. Then everything that's red highlighted is this character visible on the tape. And it also works for other floors and I think other days too. You can see he's over here. At 152. Now this picture is interesting. Notice here he's over here. He looks like he's going upstairs. Which means he's going from ground floor to first floor, murder happened on the second floor. Well, that's around 152. The murder might have already happened 30 minutes ago, if it's within the time bracket. So there's a probability of him going up to murder, or him not being part of the murder at all. You always gotta pay attention to the way the character looks like, to where he's moving. Okay, now I do know that the actual murder is this person. Because I played the case after that and I reloaded before it. Now I'm going to switch cases to show something else, which because for this case, I don't have the video footage anymore. Okay, this is how you basically pick out 
which person you find interesting, and then you can save the picture by pressing F and pinning it down. Okay. Now we go to a different mode. Now here I'm going to show you what to do once you have a picture, but you can't find it again. Okay? So, lipstick bruiser case, victim number one, Lauren Doyle. Killed with a, what was it? A blade. Near the body was found a lipstick and an unknown fingerprint, which was unknown at that point. And she complained about the stalker that was blonde and male. Okay, and then I basically did what I just did in the previous section of the video. I checked for blonde guys uh, that are male and someone near entrance of the building. Generated several false leads. Like um, the doctor telling her that she's imagining things. False lead. Some uh, dating profile, Ranveer, that's actually a homeless guy. And he gets matched to another woman too, who is like a, in a marketing company. And several blonde guys I found on cameras that matched, but their fingerprints didn't check out. Okay, then the second murder happens. Amber Cunningham, different building. And the neighbor picked up a suspicious person, tall. Okay, now we got male, blonde hair, and tall. Then I kept kept trying to find somebody that looked interesting. And then it led to two main suspects, which I found in the other building. On the ground floor where the boxes are. Found this guy. At, at that point, they didn't know his name. Okay, this guy. He fit the description. Bald, blonde hair, tall, male. And this guy too. And I found also in the first murder scene a boot print of... I think size 15. And this guy has boot print about size 16, and this one is 15. So he was the main suspect at this point. Okay, so I got, I got a photo of a guy that I think really was it. So how did they catch this guy? And here's how I basically did it. I started asking around people who have seen this guy. Okay. First I started to look inside the buildings where, where, where the murder happened. And obviously generated a lot of sightings in the building near the murder site. Oh, it wasn't really useful for finding where the guy lives. Okay. And then I kept asking around the city. And the only places I found hits of him being spotted was in this street. And in this street. And sometimes over here. And I used a CCTV camera outside to check. And he was at that point at some point. Okay. Now, what does that tell me? Does this guy... If, if he's not spotted anywhere except over here, that means he's probably not living or walking in these areas. So it's probably one of those two towers. Now the next question is, what's the probability of him walking or living in this tower? That's an apartment tower, an office tower. Almost 80% of the building is offices. So there's a low probability of him living here, but a high probability of him walking here because it's full of offices. Now inversely, that building is almost a pure apartment building. It means high probability of him living there, because it's always spotted here. And a very low probability of him working here. Okay, so then I kept uh, focusing my asking over here a few minutes, and an NPC, female NPC then said, yeah, I saw this guy, and he's right here. And he was standing like five, six meters, seven meters behind her somewhere here. And then I tracked him back to his where he's living, found the fingerprints, and that shot the case. 